Well, the only word you can use for it is iconic. Yeah, welcome to the Weed Show. We are at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for our big press event announcing the details of the Super Motocross World Championship. Myself and Daniel Blair hosted the press conference today. Uh, there's still some riders and team people who will go find and try to interrupt on this weed show that I'm just gonna say is brought to you by Honda. These are off-season shows. I don't even know, do we even have a sponsor? The Honda Sierra 450R. It's available in three flavors for 2023. There's a stadium there. There's a Super Motocross World Championship uh, logo. Three flavors. It is the standard Sierra 450R as I walk through the famous peristyles here and get in the shade. Also, the Works Edition bike, which has a lot of cool add-ons, and the 50th Anniversary Edition Honda, which has the blue seat, the gold rims, and some retro touches. Yes, 50th Anniversary. We've heard that term thrown around quite a bit lately in this sport. 50 years of Pro Motocross we celebrated this summer. It was this very building in 1972, July 8th. So 50 years and a few months where the first Supercross race took place. The idea of taking a motocross track and building it into a downtown stadium. And they raced in and out of these famous peristyles. And that's really where Supercross was born. Back then they called it the Super Bowl of motocross because the Super Bowl itself was actually pretty new back then. So that was a hot uh, phrase to use. And it was eventually shortened from Super Bowl of motocross to slang of Supercross. And that's what we have now. But what has also happened is the Pro Motocross Championship starting at the exact same time, they, they went on parallel tracks, right? And look, we all know as fans that they were all the same. They were all similar, right? You had uh, same riders, same teams. It was dirt bike racing. It really wasn't that different, but why was it not treated that way? Uh, we kept hearing about uh, the two groups, which is the Fell Motorsports and MX Sports Pro Racing. They don't get along. Um, kept hearing that. Um, Look, I'll admit it even myself, I've been in and out of the Supercross game as an announcer through the years. Um, it just wasn't a kosher relationship, and I think for the industry that was just never a good feeling to know we're competing in these two series that are really the same, but it, we're, we're not treated, it doesn't feel like it's the same. So that's really the genesis of this for people to work together, and that was really the crux of our press conference today, to have Kenneth Feld of Feld Motorsports, the CEO and chair, and Kerry Coons Russell, CEO of MX Sports, on stage together to talk about this vision. And where did it start? There's free lunch over there, so I'm just kind of keep my eyes open for it. It actually started, yeah, during COVID. Uh, I'd heard, actually, at the Daytona Supercross in 2020, that Dave Prater, the vice president of Supercross, came up to Kerry Coombs and Davey Coombs and said like, look, yeah, we, we gotta bury the hatchet here. We cannot be enemies, we have to be friends. It's just for the good of the sport overall if we would just work together on what, I don't know. Let's just be, let's just agree to be friends, right? So that's kind of how it started. And then the ideas started to roll. And where, where are you taking him? Where are you taking him? Is he going to his spot? I'll... Sorry about that, I'm just a ranger for Malcolm Stewart. They uh, agreed to be friends and we don't know what will come out of that. And then about five days later, everything shut down with COVID. Then they had to work together to get their schedules in. Supercross pushed back, motocross pushed back. I'm gonna go around the photographers here. And then when they worked together uh, during COVID, fell at MX Sports, what did they find out? Uh, hey, working together really wasn't that bad. I wanna show you something, this is cool. This is the actual, they're gonna leave it this way, the Jet Lawrence Motocross Championship bike. Keeping it dirty. Oh, I thought I saw a picture of this with a completely roasted rear tire, but you can see all the rubber marks here. So this is the Jet Lawrence uh, Motocross Championship celebration machine. You're gonna keep it dirty, keep it like it came right off uh, the racetrack. So the two groups worked together through COVID and it was like, well, that wasn't so bad. What else can we do? Well, what else they could do is maybe you could shop the TV package together so everybody knows where it is all the time and it'll be in the same places. And that's what happened. Peacock has come to the rescue. All the races will air on Peacock next year. But what they learned from talking to these media companies is that, you know what would be even better than getting all the races under one roof and one network, selling them together as one instead of two separate series? What if you could have a postseason? What if you could have playoffs? Now, I know some hardcore fans, you know, racing is designed where every race counts and there's no reason to do it that way. Well, uh, to, to ease your troubled mind, the existing championships as we know it, 17 rounds of Monster Energy Supercross, 11 rounds of Pro Motocross that will continue. They'll still crown number one plates. That part won't change. Why as a fan will you like this postseason deal? Well, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be tight. It's three races and they're gonna go single points, double points, triple points, a two moto 20 minute plus two lap format at each round. 
but they're gonna pay the riders a ton of money, like a ton of money. The overall purse at every round is going up, the traditional rounds. They're adding $1.1 million to the purse at every round, and it's kind of bottom loaded to help out the privateers at the regular 17 rounds of Supercross, 11 rounds of Motocross. But in addition to that, there is five and a half million dollars up for grabs in these three playoff rounds. A million dollars to the champ of the 450s, half a million dollars to the champ of the 250s, big money uh, for every finishing position and every finishing position in the points for that as well. What essentially has been done is they match the very lucrative factory bonuses, where it's generally considered a million dollars from a factory to win a Supercross or Motocross title, and a half a million dollars to win a 250 championship. They've essentially matched that via the purse. So riders now have three chances in a year for a lucrative championship bonus. And uh, 30 riders will get paid out in this Super Motocross World Championship. So they're taking that five and a half million dollars of the postseason and spreading it out quite a bit. Huge money on top, but also you know, more money for privateers to come in. If you're in the top 20 in points combined with both series, you get it automatically. And then the other 21 through 30 positions can race their way in uh, via an LCQ with some big money on the line. So really, the money is the big headline. This is gonna be exciting. Let's see if we can find some riders and some people to talk on it. All right, we got Malcolm Stewart here in front of yourself. Right. Looking good. That's a good looking guy. Yeah, is that all right? Yes. You, you don't look at photos and say like, ah, the elbows, the feet, the, are you okay with it? Is that one solid? Um, I, I think, I look like I'm, I'm jumping something for sure. Yeah, you're definitely jumping Jump something. something. Jump something. Jump something. Okay, you're, you're okay with the look. Yeah, I'm all right. You know what, I'm more, more stuck, I just look, because the gear, you know, the, I look really good with my gear, you know, four it's popping. seven. It's popping. It's popping. It's Minneapolis too, by the way. I just want to let you guys know that. Did you just know that by looking at it? Because I picked the gear. For no that way race. for yeah. Mini. Yeah. That's pretty cool that you do that. It was a daytime race. Wow. Dude, you're mm -hmm. blowing my mind. Yeah. I, I thought I knew some trivia. Uh -huh. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, so this deal, look, I'm just going to be straight, dude. There's a chance to win a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I know it's going to be a longer season. Gas money for the boat. Gas money Let's for the boat. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Fishing money? Okay, guess, dude, boat gas money's got to be real oh, bad man. in 2022. I, don't get me wrong, I, I'm an Abu Garcia guy. Their fishing sponsor's done a hell of a heck of a job. GoPro, it's something about you still got other added this past pro shop, still got hooks and weights and lines. In that sport, you're not getting free stuff. No. Not not everything. Like, you didn't pay for this motorcycle. I, I got to twist the throttle yeah, a little yeah. bit harder. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, so yes, there's gas boat money on the line here. Uh, it's it's 31 races instead of, you know, 30 if we had Monster Cup. But if you can get hot, dude, you can win a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Buy me a bigger boat. Okay, That's okay. That's what we're gonna do, buy bigger a bigger fish. boat. Yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, no, I think it's I think it's awesome. You know, like I said, I said it earlier, and, yep. and one of the things I wanted to touch on fans is like, you know, you always have those underlying guys that are really, really good, but not necessarily a factory ride. And the reason why I touch on this so much is because if you're a guy that, you know, did decent in Supercross, okay in outdoors or whatever, and then you just earned yourself a spot, and then you end up winning the Super Motocross deal, yeah. you can earn a factory ride. And I yes. touch back to that because five, six years ago when Monster Cup happened, the same thing happened. I got the top five, I remember, or third, and yeah. boom, I got a phone call the next day. So Really? Yeah. And they, yeah, you say Geico Honda call because of the Monster Cup. Because wow. of the Monster Cup. So you could have a guy who's like on the radar, we're looking at him, we're thinking about him, and then you get three shots to go out there and throw down. Wins the thing. And, yeah. And, and, and also, too, the guys that are like, you know, um, I don't want to say it, but like Adam Cincerello, of course, you know, yeah. he's a really, really talented guy, just has some bad luck. Everybody has it. It's no big yep. deal. Somehow, if you end up racing this race, gets going, wins the thing, he's back on top again. Yeah. So there's yeah. so many different strategies to, to use that. And, and I think the number one thing is staying injury prone, you know, of course. And that's that's it doesn't this doesn't three more races doesn't add on to that but three more races add on to making a lot more money yeah potential to get set yourself up for the next few years you yeah. know so um I, that's how i look at this and the reason why i like i touch on that so much you know for the, the earning the opportunity of a factory ride because i was one of those guys i know what it feels like to to be sitting in in november and be like man what am i gonna do you know yeah. i was that guy and i finally got that opportunity to shot and got an opportunity in 2015, won a race, earned myself a next year contract, and won a Supercross Championship in 250 plus. Like it can change so much. Wow. You know, for that just one for one race. And yep. um, I think it's cool. You know, I think it's really, really cool. So, but yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. But I think the more thing I'm more excited about is just change. I like change. Yeah. Like change is very good. And, and to see the, even the futures. I mean, I think the futures is gonna be really good. They mentioned something about that. So I think that's gonna be awesome. And, and of course the 250 class, 450 class is gonna be good. And 
you don't know man you never know we got a long time to think about that you know and a lot of a long time to before we get to there but um you know first things first you gotta you know put your best foot forward and focus on supercross and winning that focus on motocross and winning that and then win the super motocross well look this would have been perfect for you this year okay you got dragged off the couch came back I don't know. Were you really ready when no, you came back to you? No, absolutely no. not. So you're probably like, bro. Jump. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything hurts. Sore, tired, and it's probably like, okay, I'm doing my bit for the team. But now, okay, if this is this year. You'd have been like, I got these four races to get ready. That's right. And then I go start used winning. Those absolutely. Yeah. Gate drop. Not yep. just to get my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were whooping well, I'm not you. Gonna, they, were, well, they were whooping me. You know yeah, what I mean? like, yeah. I wasn't even. I felt like I'm like, I saw you guys in Supercross. I actually had something for you. Now I'm like. See ya. Yeah. I think the only time yeah. I was close was on the gate. That was it. And that then you didn't it. see him the rest of the time. Yeah, as soon as the gate dropped, but now you guys. got like a dangling carrot of like, if I even send it in these four races, it's going to help me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And, I, and like I said, that same opportunity, you, you could use that for gate drops and to have something to look forward to, you know? Yeah. And um, again, it's it's there's so many different strategies that, to use this, but nobody will know nobody nope. will know until we start racing so i think it's going to be good of course you know it's going to be the first year we don't really know exactly how good it's going to be to the full t but i think it's you know with the elite riders that we have especially in the premier class it's going to be some good racing oh it's going to be gnarly it's going to be really good racing. title come down to the wire and with also, all these too, dudes i think i think i think the biggest thing that i like about it is like of course super motocross you know you're combining but it reminds you of races like daytona Yep. you know atlanta and monster you see, cup and, and monster cup and you've yeah. seen these different riders that they may not had a not so good at supercross or whatever scrubbing a triple or whatever that case may be but really good at outdoors now they have a playing even playing field yeah you're right you know what i mean and of course where these venues could you know are going to be of course we know this is going to be one of them but we're out of all we're we don't have these tracks down yes. you know what i mean so we're all out of our comfort zone Yep. So I think that's going to be another cool aspect of it. And just being able to race some areas that I never raced here. I've always wanted to. Now yeah. I have an opportunity to race here, you know? So last time I remember watching, it was Larry Brooks and stuff oh, like that. Oh, flying you know, off the Paris style, dude. <laughs> sorry, Larry. Sorry, Larry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's probably asked about that. He's going to yeah, be yeah. upset about that. I'm sorry, okay. Larry. He was a heck of a teammate and all that. You know, the team, team manager. There stuff. you go. There you go. Yeah. But yeah. either way. The point where I'm getting at is just I think it's gonna be cool to where I can at least say I've raced that. You know what I mean? And years down the road, I, you know, I look back to it, I can say, hey, you know what? I was that was me on TV and I raced that. So, um, and I'm also more excited that I'm a part of the change. Yeah. I've seen it before. You yep. know what I mean? I've seen different changes, but now I'm even more excited because this is a whole new avenue for us, and I think it's gonna be a big. I think it's gonna be a blowout. We're gonna blow some doors off. All right, so. get some boat money. That's right. Well dude. done. It's all about boat money. Malcolm Stewart making some right. boat money if it works out. There we go. Thanks, sir. We got them. We're good. Everybody's working as one. Well, okay. I can get these. Uh, I was just trying to be friendly. I would get that out of, out no, of the way. No, no, I get it. I get so let me say this. Okay. Next year, you'll be fine. But this year, you did miss some time. And there was no reason to come back. So is it like, hey, cool. There would have been a reason to... And I don't know if you could have with the particular nature of your injury. But for your whole season, you get hurt in December. And it's like, my season's screwed. That's a nice upgrade that it still might have something to race for. Yeah, I think it's tough for me because if, you know, in talking with the team and all that, yeah. I want to be racing, man. Like, oh, I, I want to be out there. Even, yes. even if I had to come back halfway through outdoors and you're not going to have a shot at the title or anything, yeah. I want to be out there and be out there racing because what you realize more than anything yeah. when you stop racing, yeah. sometimes it can feel like a grind when you're in it all the time. And it, it's like, it, it can, sometimes it feels like it sucks. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I love racing their bikes. Sometimes it feels like it sucks. Okay. But when you stop, you miss everything, the travel, the people. Oh, interviews. not missing like the gains you're getting as a racer, just the lifestyle even. Just, I mean, yeah. When, wow, yeah, okay. Even as simple as something like that. Like yeah. you come to appreciate all those little things that yeah. you think are monotonous and right. stupid. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, first I want to clarify that I would be back as soon as possible regardless. But yeah, yeah I do think in general it is going to add another element where you're going to want to get back as quick as possible instead of waiting for the start of supercross or, or waiting for the start of outdoors or yeah you know, stuff like that i right. think it'll be just i think in general throughout the seasons it'll just be a bit more engaged yeah you know you kind of see some guys cash it in at the end of seasons get yes. naturally right yep. so i think it'll just be yeah and you honestly i tell anybody trying to win their first outdoor race Try to win it in the last three races because nobody really cares. <laughs> but seriously, yeah, you can feel the level feel, go down. Like I you won can my feel last, it. I won my first national um, 2017 
Bud's Creek. Yeah. Like second to last race. And like, I didn't ride that good there. Like, but everybody else was exactly. dropping. Exactly. But you're not going to want to drop if you got the playoffs coming up. Yes. You know, you're going to yep. want to kind of be um, maybe gearing to peak for that. But I think it's just going to keep people engaged and you're going to you're going to be able to notice that intensity. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. How's I was that? trying to be as nice as possible. How's I was trying that? to be as nice yeah, as no, possible. Sure. Um, you're always nice. How are you on, are, are you back on a motorcycle? We I'm saw back. some videos. How's that yeah, going? I'm back. Yeah. You're good. I'm good. What have you been doing? Like on a supercross track or, or No, what? I'm still outdoors right now. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, just been healing my body, man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of healing. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's really what it is. Out. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. It's been, it's been quite, it's been quite the year for me, but I, I'm really excited about where I'm at. I know it's kind of the general answer, but I, I really sure. am like from a, a personal sp perspective and everything, like I, I'm really stoked to be doing this. I'm really stoked to have another opportunity with Kawasaki for a couple of years to race and reach my goals. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in the best place I've been in a long time. So just looking forward to being out there. We'll always remember round two not even pushing to the rhythm section, leading and pulling away from the field. It's still there. That that was like the last memory. Like you were still leading races this year. This year yeah. you were leading races. It's still there. Yeah, I mean, every time I get back on the bike, it, it could be a year and I still yeah. feel like, still feel like I can do it. I don't think yeah. I'd still be here if I didn't. Right. Like, just, you know, there's a level of sacrifice that if, if you're not gonna win or be towards the front, it's like, what are you really doing? Yeah. So I believe in myself. Um, and yeah, that's all I can keep doing and keep trying. That's what people want to hear. Yes, that's sir. what they want to hear. Okay. So that's our show. Thanks to uh, Adam C. Cirillo and Malcolm Stewart for talking. Uh, check out the other Racer X YouTube channel videos for interviews with other riders and dignitaries from the event. If you're a little confused by all this, I'll just sum it up as quickly as I can. The two existing Supercross and Motocross series are going to continue just like they always have. At the end of the year, they'll combine the points for both and come up with a ranking, top 20, and those 20 riders will automatically be seated in the three playoff races to determine an additional third champion for the year with big money on the line. But there is also an increase in purse money at the regular motocross and supercross races as well. So that's really the best part. Even if you don't like it, the riders are going to make a lot more money this year. And who's going to knock that? And I think even more important than that, and I've talked about this in previous videos, People are so excited just to see two titans of the industry working together. I have never seen teams this universally excited for something. I mean, look, they usually can't agree on anything, anything. And even some of the naysayer, very hard to impress type people in this industry, team people and team bosses, I'm not gonna name names, but uh, there are people who are generally not positive about things that are positive about this because of the overarching thing. Not just playoffs, not purse money, not the fact that every race will be streamed on Peacock, just the fact that the smart people of the industry and the titans of the industry are working together and once they do that who knows what other positive things they come up with and they're really big on adding the grassroots element in that's why motocross has to be a part of this because people buy motocross bikes and go to a motocross track not supercross and that's why they're so big on pushing the loretta's program the moto scouting combine program and supercross futures to see the next generation of riders to try to take a rider from the first moment he gets on a motorcycle all the way to los angeles coliseum with millions of dollars on the line and try to take care of the riders the entire way because if you don't take care of the enthusiasts at the grassroots and the athletes at the top your entire sport is going to crater and i think that's why the industry is so pumped on this because they feel real leadership real guidance and real continuity which leads to stability of the industry that we all love thanks for watching